Hello everyone. I am Talha Ongun, a PhD candidate at Northeastern University. Today I will be presenting our work, Living Off the Land Command Detection Using Active Learning. This is joint work with Microsoft and the Northeastern University. In recent years, enterprises have been targeted by adversaries who leverage creative ways to infiltrate their systems. One increasingly common evasive method is to hide the malicious activity behind a benign program by using tools that are already installed on user computers. These programs are usually part of the operating system distribution or another user installed library. Therefore, this kind of attack is called living off the land. Many such tools that are used for these attacks are documented in the open source LOLBAS project. Uh, the actual binaries used in the attacks are called LOLBINs, short for LOL binaries. Uh, the goal of this project is to document every binary script and library that can be used for living off the land techniques and uh, they show their example usage and malicious functionality. These tools could be used for downloading and executing payloads and the lateral movement within the compromised network, uh, activities that are common in advanced persistent threat campaigns. At, after the initial compromise of the system, these attacks differ in a number of different ways compared to the traditional malware activity. Malware files can be flagged by the antivirus scans based on the signature and the third party files are usually not trusted. The known malware is usually ineffective in well-monitored and updated up-to-date systems. Living off the land techniques, however, are used by human agents or uh, advanced stealthy malware as they use existing trusted system binaries and they may not create a new malicious files on disk that are scanned by the antivirus software and uh, they are hard to detect misuse without extensive monitoring. Here are some examples of malicious activities executed with different LOL bins. Uh, for Bits Admin is a Windows command line tool that can be used to create and monitor, uh, download or upload jobs and adversaries could use this tool to uh, download malicious files to a temporary location and submit jobs to execute the malicious payload. Uh, CertUtil is a certificate management tool with functionality to encode and decode certificates, but it could be used for uh, decoding a hidden base 64 encoded file into a malicious executable file. So how can we detect this behavior? Solutions that attempt to detect such attacks are typically based on heuristics and regular expression matching, but they only work well against known behavior and may not be specific only to the malicious usage of the binary, so false positive rate could be high. And there are novel ways to leverage existing binaries uh, that are discovered by the attackers every day. And machine learning approaches may work well, but there are, there are usually not enough labeled samples to train effective classifiers. Uh, anomaly detection modules could be used to detect uh, new attack types, but that is the case only when uh, the malicious behavior uh, diverges significantly from the benign, benign use case. So prior work studied malicious PowerShell script and command detection, which is another way attackers use system functionalities. Rusak et al. proposed combining static analysis and deep learning to detect malicious PowerShell scripts. They parse scripts to get abstract syntax tree representation and learn embeddings based on the structure of the subtrees in the AST and they represent script as vectors and they train deep learning classifiers. A handler et al. study malicious PowerShell detection methods using anti-malware scan interface and uh, they propose contextual embedding methods to represent PowerShell code to train deep learning classifiers. In general, PowerShell is a more understood attack vector and the availability of the labels makes supervised machine learning techniques suitable. Applying these techniques to a generic malicious lull bin detection can be uh, challenging with the lack of labels. There have been also studies done for anomaly-based detections by monitoring and tracking process actions. Devar et al. defines normal process behavior as a sequence of observed actions and uh, find anomalous behavior that does not conform to known behavior. Wang et al. study provenance-based met methods for detecting stealthy malware that could use living off the land techniques and they represent samples by extracting data provenance sequences and learning embeddings based on the actions. 
They detect anomalies on the feature space using a density-based anomaly detector. Uh, having a comprehensive behavioral profile of processes can be difficult to obtain and behavioral profile of an adversarial use case of a process can match a benign one in some cases causing more false positives. So more fine-grained data for the process creation uh, can be used to help detection. So in our work, we investigate how to detect this behavior based on the command line string and how to define and represent each uh, command sample. We also investigate how to train these classifiers efficiently using fully labeled instances as the availability of the labeled data in this space is limited. We also want to detect new variants of attacks that could be used by the adversaries as these techniques are uh, being explored more and more and more every day. Here's an overview of our system, LoLab, living off the land command detection framework with active learning. Unlabeled process creation events are generated by the endpoint software installed across a large number of clients, and these events are transmitted to the backend system for analysis. Our system generates feature vector representations for process command lines, and as part of this process, we develop a new command line representation method using word vectors. The unlabeled data is augmented with a smaller labeled data set generated manually by a human analyst after investigating uh, lolbin related process commands. Uh, during an iterative process in our active learning framework, the classifier is trained on labeled samples and evaluated on the unlabeled data and generates a ranking across classes using several strategies to select samples for investigation and uh, labeling by the security analyst. In the first part of my talk, I will get into the details of our feature extraction methodology. So our main insight in detecting lol attacks is that the malicious usage of the binaries can be inferred from the command line string, uh, including the binary name and the supplied arguments. Uh, and to have more context information for individual command lines, we also concatenate the uh, process creation event of the parent process uh, to define a single sample. And uh, we define tokens as building blocks for command line text and parse each sample with a set of common delimiters. After splitting each command line sample into a token sequence, we represent them numerically in a meaningful way that captures contextual information. The context is defined by the words that are in the same window of K words in a sequence of command line. Words that occur in similar contexts will be closer in the embedding vector space, and we use uh, word embedding techniques from the NLP community, uh, Word2Vec and FastText for this task. task. One of the challenges in training word to vec models is that they cannot create representations for new tokens that are not already in the dictionary. And uh, we address this by creating a special rare token uh, used for grouping the tokens that uh, appear a uh, few times in the corpus. And fast text trains on n-grams, which means it can generate vectors for previously unseen words if an n-gram is present in the training set. So this diagram shows a simple example demonstrating tokenization and uh, embedding model training. We tokenize the command line sample and train an embedding model uh, as shown. Uh, in the end, we get word vectors using an unlabeled uh, set of command line samples to be used for uh, feature vector generation. So another observation we have is that malicious command lines tend to include certain tokens more often compared to benign commands. And, uh, to gain more insights into the token usage and incorporate them in our features, we define a method to score each individual token based on the labeled data. For each labeled sample, we define the token features to be the corresponding word embedding given by either a Word2Vec or FastX model, and we append the representation of the Lolbin name of the sample. And we fit these values into a random forest classifier with their respective labels. And so one command line sample has multiple tokens and a single label uh, that is used for all of its tokens. So using the same example labeled this time, we show how different tokens are represented and, and scored uh, using the embeddings obtained in the previous step. 
the inclusion of the low bin encoding among the features helps us differentiate uh, tokens existing in different contexts. Uh, this is useful as one token usage in a specific low bin may show a malicious intent, whereas for other binaries, it's used as part of a benign operation. In the end, we get a dictionary of tokens uh, to be used in the feature vector. And this dictionary is updated period periodically as more labeled data is available. In order to represent each command line as a fixed length feature vector without trimming or padding, we use aggregation methods on the word vectors. The pipeline for feature generation is illustrated in this figure. Uh, as explained, we use word vectors and scores that are constructed offline to generate feature vectors. And we apply mean, max, and average pooling to combine the word vectors to, to uh, construct a fixed length representation for the whole command line. We use the token scores as the weights for average pooling to make the signal of the potentially malicious token stronger. We also add the total token count and the rare token count as separate numerical features since these capture some char characteristics of uh, malicious behavior unusually long command lines or a large number of rare tokens. Uh, we then append uh, the maximum scores of the tokens in the sample as separate features together with the representation of the low bin name. So in the end, we convert each sample to a numerical vector to start training the machine learning model. So now we move on to the classifier training and the active learning procedure to improve that classifier. Active learning is typically used in the machine learning scenarios where limited labeled samples are available and it is fairly expensive to expand the set of labeled samples. Uh, instead of randomly sampling instances for labeling by an analyst, active learning defines ad adaptive algorithms for sample selection. We propose the design of an active learning framework for detecting malicious command lines, such as those occurring in the lol attacks to have better classifiers, minimizing the investigation and labeling budget. The ultimate goal of the system is to train a multi-class classifier that predicts whether a command line sample is benign or belongs to one of the malicious classes. Uh, we use gradient boosting as the classifier and the samples in each class uh, is used to learn a naive based model to, to be used for anomaly detection within each class. And we propose a sample selection strategy that selects uncertain and anomalous samples ranked from each class uh, to, to be labeled. So uncertain samples are defined as samples that the classifier is not confident in its assignment and at least two classes has a, a low margin between the prediction probabilities, meaning those samples are uh, close to the decision boundary. Uh, anomalous samples, on the other hand, are samples that are outliers within the predicted class. Uncertain samples are used to correct the decision boundary between classes and uh, anomalous samples can uncover new interesting behavior that could be used to discover new classes of attacks. We choose multi-class classification to separate different classes of malicious behavior, uh, which is useful for identifying anomalies per class after classification. The analyst can choose to assign more fine-grained class labels for each sample in a deployment setting. So we can go through one iteration of the active learning algorithm. Uh, we start with training the classifier using the set of labeled samples. And uh, we then evaluate the classifier and generate uncertainty scores. A samples class is predicted to be the class with the highest probability and uncertainty score uh, then considers the class with the second highest probability for that sample. And if these two uh, posterior probabilities are close, the difference is small and we get a high uncertainty score. After assigning samples to classes, we build naive Bayes models per class. And uh, anomaly scores for these samples are generated. Uh, the model is used to generate the likelihood that the unlabeled sample belongs to the assigned class uh, predicted by the classifier, and this value is used as the anomaly score. After generating the scores, we select the next batch of samples in each class in a round-robin fashion, the most anomalous sample and the sample with the largest uncertainty score. 
and we repeat this step until enough samples are collected. We select this. We send the selected samples to uh, to the human analyst for labeling, and we add the newly labeled data to be used in the training in the next iteration. Then the whole process is restarted. Uh, and this concludes one iteration of the active learning uh, algorithm. So we now move on to the evaluation. We use process creation telemetry reports provided by the Windows Defender for Endpoint Enterprise Security product. The first data set contains all samples containing millions of unlabeled samples of Lolbin command lines, uh, which is used for training the word embedding models. Uh, the selected samples, meaning that a specific pattern has been detected by the heuristic rule-based methods, we use this data set for a small real-world experiment with a security analyst. And the labeled samples, a subset of the samples that have been analyzed by the security experts to verify their malicious behavior. This data set contains 1987 samples, and I will be covering uh, some experiments using this labeled data set, and you can refer to our paper for more details on other experiments. First, we show some examples for, from the token score di dictionary we generated using the labeled samples. Higher scores identifying samples that are more likely to be malicious. Among the suspicious tokens, we observe APT simulator and attack IQ, uh, which are keywords indicating red team activity that were captured and labeled as malicious. Uh, Third little comments containing the token temp uh, are always found to be malicious. And we observe keywords that typically appear in the regular software development or sysadmin lifecycle, like releases or jet brains. So they are less likely to be malicious. The scores that are generated based on the available labeled samples are used in the feature generation to represent the command lines as explained. So we then performed the unsupervised embedding model training for both Word2Vec and FastText and generated two sets of features. To compare these representations, we measured the performance of a multi-class random forest classifier trained on these samples. The Word2Vec model has an F1 score of 0.94, whereas FastText has 0.96. Uh, although the results are comparable, the, we decided to use FastText in our uh, framework. We believe the reason Fast text is performing slightly better, maybe due to the better generalization of token embedding and supporting vectorization of out of dictionary tokens. So this thing's distinction uh, can result in a larger gap when capturing the embeddings in a real world setting where uh, vast numbers of samples are going to be processed. So this experiment demonstrates that using embedding based approaches, uh, multi-class classifiers can distinguish benign samples from several classes of malicious samples. We set up an experiment to track progress during the active learning process. Uh, we use a boosting classifier, gradient boosting, for the classification task. And we use the naive ways anomaly detection model in the active learning framework. Uh, we leverage the same set of labeled instances, which are 1987 samples distributed to the five classes of Lolbins. We start with a very small number of 10 labeled samples and select at each iteration five samples for labeling and inclusion in the training data for the next iteration. So in this setting, since we know the labels, we simulate a human analyst by sending the labels for selected samples and just querying the labels for those. Uh, our setup assumes that an analyst would correctly label the selected samples. So we report accuracy metrics after each iteration to track process. Here we plot precision and the percentage of true positives found as several iterations of active learning are performed with the boosting classifier. Uh, we observe some oscillations over time, which indicate the classifier correcting itself after learning from new samples and uh, converging after only 30 iterations. So the classifier gets almost perfect precision and recall as more samples uh, are lab labeled and added to the training set. So this table shows the metrics after five and 30 iterations for different classes. Uh, note that we use a set of 1987 samples in this labeled data set and uh, after 30 iterations only 150 
additional samples are labeled. So uh, our framework is able to learn an effective classifier using only 160 labels. We now compare our uh, sample selection strategy for active learning with other labeling strategies. We define the following variants. Our system is LOLAL, uh, as we described, and we build one variant of LOLAL with a different classifier, logistic regression. The rest of the variants use the same underlying models, uh, but they pick different sets of samples. Uncertainty sampling uses only uncertain samples and uh, anomaly sampling, which uses only anomalous samples. Uh, random sampling uh, selects samples at random, uh, which is the, the baseline. This, this plot shows the average F1 scores uh, over different classes. So our system is designed to prioritize alerts for labeling, uh, considering a fixed budget of expert time. This experiment demonstrates how our system, LOLA, achieves better accuracy at detection compared to the other sampling strategies when the number of samples is fixed per iteration. That uh, translates to fewer la labeled samples needed to achieve uh, the same accuracy level. So sampling using only anomalous and uncertain samples uh, does not provide significantly better performance than random sampling. The classifier choice is clearly important as the malicious and benign samples in our dataset are not linearly separable in the feature space, which leads to logistic regression performing poorly compared to gradient boosting. And the, this table on the right shows the progress comparison of the variance at three iterations showing F1 scores and the standard deviation values. And the LOLAL consistently gives higher F1 scores and lower variance than other sampling, sample selection strategies. We have detailed the design and evaluation of LOLAL active learning framework. Uh, however, there are still several directions to explore to improve the system to provide more comprehensive protection. AV solutions mostly rely on pattern matching and rules to detect uh, known malicious behaviors and OS level protection could be used to restrict programs capabilities with a set of rules. These policies can be constructed once the pattern of the malicious command is known, but uh, they may not help finding new variations of malicious behavior. We can enhance these detections with our uh, approach and uh, traditional detection systems can be combined with our system to improve detection. The malicious lobbing activity could be part of multi-stage attack campaigns where adversary tries to perform uh, lateral movement in the target organization or uh, hopes to remain undetected for extended periods of time. Uh, in these cases, more contextual information is usually needed to, uh, to detect advanced behavior. Our system could be enriched with more detectors and uh, sequential features to investigate other data sources from the target hosts and networks to provide a more good global perspective that could enhance the detection of advanced adversaries. So attackers can also uh, use the sample selection algorithm uh, to their advantage. Since anomalous samples are selected for investigation, constructing a large number of unusual commands uh, may lower the chance of the real malicious command being investigated. And poisoning and evasion attacks could be possible against the classifier. Uh, by generating activity labeled as benign to poison the models or uh, evasion techniques by using only certain tokens in the command line. Uh, but we believe the attackers would be limited if restricted to use commands in their legitimate context only with benign scores uh, to avoid trigger triggering an anomaly. Uh, we leave a detailed investigation of potential attacks against our system for future work. To summarize, we present an active learning framework, LOLAL, designed to detect living off the land attacks on target systems. We show that our system is effective when a limited number of samples are available for training machine learning models, at the same time detecting potentially new attack behavior. We present a new method to represent common line text based on word embedding techniques and token scores, which could be used by different security applications. 
We use a unique real world data set for this problem and show the effectiveness of our approach. Uh, we think active learning for security should be utilized more when labeled instances is limited. With this, I conclude my talk and thank you for listening. I will be happy to take questions.